So it's one thing to be a mentor and, you know, you're coaching someone, you want someone to get better at their craft, but it's a completely different thing to insult someone. That's coming up next on Behind the Lens, Episode 5. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I am not Mr. Rogers. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is your boy, Lee Francois from Francois Graphics. Only place where you can get your video, photo, graphics, and websites done under one roof. You're in Boston. So, I know it's been a long time. It's been a really long time since I posted anything. Me saying anything at all because, you know, I don't like to talk so much. But when I do get to talk, I talk. And uh, judging from the intro of this vlog today, you guys know that uh, someone definitely insulted me. So, let's get right into that. There I am one day just minding my business. And all of a sudden I get this phone call from a gentleman whom I'm going to name Teach. Because this gentleman taught me something. So... We're going to call him Teach. I get a phone call from Teach, and Teach is telling me that uh, he's been seeing my work online, and, you know, he's happy that, you know, I'm getting work. However, my work looks really basic, and on top of that, the quality is not up to standard. Furthermore, I'm getting gigs that are way over my head. And I'm like, what? Where's all this coming from? What did I do, Teach? Let me give you some context before I finish out that story. So, me and Teach met through a mutual friend. And one day we sat together and we came up with a plan to start this photography class together now mind you I never went to photography school uh, I learned the basics from a good friend by the name of Bobby Shakes shout out to Bobby Shakes for teaching me the introductory basic skills I needed to know of photography uh, if you don't know who Bobby Shakes is he's a old-school photographer who used to take all the photos at the nightclubs all around Boston and post them up on this site called bobbyshakes.com. We created this class and we got the people invited and you know I acted as a host. I wasn't a teacher because like I said I didn't go to photography school. I picked this up uh, watching YouTube and also from my mentors. Um, when we got this class together uh, things were going great. Having great photo shoots, good times, lots of fun, taking lots of pictures, and getting a, a, a lot of knowledge, obviously. Towards the end of the class, I want to say about maybe the last two classes, uh, Teach just really started, you know, acting a little differently in terms of, you know, saying, hey, this is going so well, I think I might you know do this on my own so that's what teach did yeah teach did that in the middle sorry towards the end of uh, the class that we were doing together which means that he wasn't there to end the rest of that class that he was teaching what so now that you guys got that let me return back to the story now mind you all of that stuff happened a while back and you know I still felt some type of way about it because you know teach wasn't there I had to finish out the classes because I'm a man of my word and you know whatever I start I see it through the end and teach definitely let me down so teach calls me and you know he tells me all those things he said to me and I'm on the phone like hmm 
I don't know how to feel about this right now. But, um, you know, I'm just not going to say much right now and let this kind of process and figure out what's going on. What did I do to deserve this? And I figured it out. Teach is just jealous. Yeah, that's what I, that's the conclusion I came to. Teach is jealous because um, what Teach has been seeing is me as a result of planting seeds. I'll tell you about that in a minute. As a result of me planting seeds along this entrepreneurial journey of mine, um, those seeds have blossomed. They've grown into full grown, you know, saplings or trees, whatever you want to call them. And I'm getting results from those seeds. Now, those seeds, what are those seeds? Those seeds are free work. What? Yeah, free work. As a business entrepreneur, you have to understand that on this road, you have to do what you have to do to get to where you need to get to. And me, what I need to get to is something that is way beyond my reach and you know I don't know all the right people to get me connected with that so I have to work from the ground up and literally that's what I've been doing I've been planting these seeds providing services for free um, I have a business coach and we've been doing some cold calling and calling people offering my services for free uh, in exchange for you know building relationships in exchange for um, you know connections and networking and just getting my name out there as well as uh, more work to add to my portfolio without me planting these seeds I wouldn't have anything right now I'd be just like teach Colin insulting me on top of that saying hey I need to be on your team because you're getting work that's way over your head and you need someone who has way more experience than you to take over and to do it better than you and to just take your place at some point so that you can also take the hard work that I've done and turn it into your own and basically say that it's yours now. Nigga, please. No, it's not going to happen that way. <laughs> Don't let my meekness be mistaken for weakness because I am by far not weak and uh, I have a past that can definitely attest to that. Where's your ID? And Where the is your ID? I can't sir. tell you to put it out now! So take sword. it out! Yes sir! Back to the point. Teach called me, insulted me, talking crazy, saying all kind of outlandish things that I just couldn't believe, especially coming from Teach. Teach is a much older guy and you know he should know better but I took that as a learning lesson not everyone you know you call a friend you can trust and depend on uh, teach is definitely one of those um, you know associate friends those associate friends that you you know don't really get too close with you just kinda here and there and passing and say hi and bye cuz um, definitely hurt my feelings uh, because it wasn't a critique, it was definitely an insult, for sure. Yeah, that's all you need to know. So, music video. Man, I have been working hard these past few weeks, and I got about two music videos. Uh, one of them I edited down already, sent it to the client. Client's very excited about it, so... I'm going to be showing you snippets of that music video at the end of this episode, so stay tuned. But um, the client is a woman by the name of Anita Faye. And Anita Faye is a, I want to say, independent gospel artist. Because she's not really mainstream, but you probably heard of her. You probably not, depending on how old you are. I know I haven't heard of her until, you know... I met up with her. Let 
We got to shoot the music video in the Strand Theater here in Boston. I can't wait for you guys to check it out at the end of this episode so that you can tell me what you think about it. Tell me if you think that uh, my work is amateur and uh, I don't want to know what I'm doing and, you know, uh, work that I'm getting is over my head. No pun intended. The Jonathan Smith Theory. Hmm. Jonathan Smith Theory. Who the heck is Jonathan Smith? Let alone what his theory is, right? I'm going to tell you. About a month ago, I spoke to a classroom uh, of some young adults at my old school, um, the Jeremiah E. Burke. I graduated from the Jeremiah E. Burke here in Dorchester in Boston, and I spoke to a group of students in the tech arts class, media arts, tech arts. I'm not really sure what the name of the class was, but spoke to some kids in that classroom and I taught them all about what it is I know in terms of the tech field because these kids were learning graphic design, video editing, uh, they were learning everything that they need to know to get into this industry and since I kind of you know came in on my own the only thing I really went to school for was graphic design I came in on my own so I kind of you know didn't have the the basic structure and foundation on some of these things so I came in and I'm like hey you know I figured this whole thing out without school but make sure you stay in school because school is important it's gonna teach you those things that you know I didn't know it's taking me you know a while to get them but I'm finally getting them because I'm doing as much research and teaching myself as much as possible so that I do get those basics. Speaking to those kids, man, it was something awesome because I really, I really had to spend some time and kind of reflect on my past life and what I've been through since high school. That's it. So speaking to them kind of came full circle to me because my life really started after high school uh, with you know the military and then uh, going to you know being incarcerated and also having a son and you know all these life-changing things happened to me and you know it just felt really good to go back and just share that story with them and to prepare them for this this life which we call real life uh, prepare them for it and also give them some golden nuggets of my own because you know they learn every day from their teacher However, learning it from someone who's had a different life experience and someone who's had, you know, different type of upbringing and different, uh, you know, journey is something a whole lot different. So, coming back to the Jonathan Smith theory, this is part of the research that I did. Uh, Jonathan Smith is a gentleman whom you all should know because you listen to his music. Uh, you just probably don't know his real name, but Jonathan Smith is Little John. Yeah! Uh-huh! Yeah! Yeah, that guy. So, Little John, in his music, when, uh, you know, when he first started, when he first started coming out on the scene as a mainstream artist, there was an element to his music that really stuck out and that element was that he brought it in those songs whether it was the beat whether it was an ad lib or a lyric a combination of all those things he always brought it and the songs paid off for it because he's been hitting billboard charts winning awards all kinds of stuff ever since he came into the game right so I came up with this theory that in whatever you do, if you bring it like Jonathan Smith, you're going to be successful because that's like a formula. Just as long as you bring it, you make sure the lyrics are on point. You make sure the beats are on point. You make sure your delivery of everything is on point. That could be applied to anything. If you're a chef, you make sure that 
you know, you, you slice up the, the ingredients on point and they're nice and fresh. Also, you make sure that you season them great. You make sure you cook it to perfection. Take it out at the perfect temperature. Right, three F's. Three F's. Fresh, flavorful food. Right. And you're telling me now my appetizer is frozen because we make a bolt at the beginning of the week. Yeah. I just read that, literally entering the building, so I don't expect anything frozen. Thank you. <laughs> you're bound to have a great meal. That applies to everything. And that's what I like to call the Jonathan Smith theory so I started off uh, my lecture speech teaching moment I started it off with this theory and you know I did a little dance for them I'll show you a little clip take a look What just happened? I thought you were gonna dance. You thought I was gonna dance? Yeah. Why? Because the music was on. What else? What else? You took your camera out, but what did you think was about to happen? You thought I was about to bust a move, right? Do something cool. That's what you were expecting, right? You were expecting something. So the Jonathan Smith theory has to do with expectation. You guys are in a media arts design class, right? And when you're working with real life clients, there's always this expectation, all right? That expectation is always, you know, somewhere like up here. So whatever it is that you put in your passion into, Whatever you're doing in front of that screen for however amount of time you spent on it, there's this expectation, right? So you guys see me getting all hype, getting crazy. I'm about to do something, right? Well, design is just like that. You spent all this time working on something. Why not have it be up here, right? Why, why are you going to spend all this time just to show me something that somebody could have made in Microsoft Word? No offense to anybody that uses Microsoft Word, but that's what the expectation is in this field. You always have to be striving for something great. All right? So that's what it is. Now you know what it is, remember that. All right? Because in so everything I do, I strive for progress and not perfection, but I definitely make sure that I bring it each and every single time. And that's the one key element that my clients synonymously uh, tell me that, man, you always take it over the top. And I love that element of surprise because that's just who I am. That's Francois Graphics. That's the legacy that I want to leave behind. So with all that said, I'd like you guys to check out this music video by Anita Fay, and let me know what you think because um, I still get goosebumps when I watch this thing. So that's all for now. Lee Francois signing out. If this is your first time on the channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, find me on YouTube, subscribe so that you can know when all these, when this show comes back on and I'll see you guys next time. I could pretend hmm, Problems don't bother me today Or I could be real, so real Until
So here's what I'm 